me take a deep breath. <laughs> God, we thank you for the day of life, Lord. We thank you for all you do for us, Lord. Pray for all the people that have been uh, harmed during all the storms, the bad weather, the tornadoes, specifically in North Mississippi. We pray for the uh, volunteers and people that are helping them. We pray for our county, pray for our leadership. Just uh, be with us in this meeting. We just thank you for another day of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Charles. Thanks for listening to the minutes. I'll uh, ask me or Steve Seaman. The Newton County Board of Supervisors met in the regular first of the month meeting in their boardroom in the Newton County Courthouse in Decatur, Mississippi on the 6th day of January 2020 at 10 o'clock a.m. George Hayes voiced the opening prayer. Sheriff Jody Pennington opened the meeting as prescribed by law. Present for the meeting included the following Charles Godwin, President of the Board, Joe Alexander, Kenneth Harris, Charles Moles, and Jackie Johnson. George Hayes, Clerk of the Board, Jason Lane, Board Attorney, Steve Seal, County Administrator were also present. Joe Alexander made a motion. Kim Harris forced the second to the motion to approve the minutes as corrected as of December 19, 2019. The motion carried unanimously. Charles Moles made a motion. Kim Harris forced the second to the motion to approve the docket as presented and recommended by the Comptroller. The motion carried unanimously. The current contract with Patient Care Logistics Solutions Mississippi LLC was set to expire on 12-31-2019. An extension was negotiated for one additional month. The new contract will expire on January 31st, 2020. The cost will be $5,000. A copy of the extension is included in these minutes. Noted, delinquent justice court fines for the month of November 21st were, it should be 21st through December 20th, were $425.42. American Municipal Service collections for the same period were $338.89. There were 178 new cases opened during that period with fines in the amount of $47,478 levied. $3,337.50 from the new cases were collected. There were 36 dismissals for the period. Kenneth Harris made a motion and Joe Alexander voiced a second to the motion to replace Glenn Hollingsworth with Jackie Johnson. At 23678 Highway 80, Chunky, Mississippi, as a board member of East Central Planning and Development District. The motion carried unanimously. Charles Moulds made a motion. Joe Alexander voiced a second to the motion to authorize County Administrator. Let's see. How should that read? Authorize County Administrator to accept. The low quote for financing 2020 Dodge Charger costing $23,260.10 for a three-year term. Bancorp South bid 3.17%. Their bid was received six days before Bank First and bid 3.17%. Administrator chose Bancorp South as their bid was received six days before Bank First. The motion carried unanimously. Noted Lynetta Cooksey from East Central Planning Development District contacted the administrator to see if the county was interested in applying for a CDBG grant. Page 2. Joe Alexander made a motion. Kenneth Harris voiced a second to authorize Sheriff Jody Pennington to apply for a JAG grant for handheld intoxilizers. The cost would be $5,000. The grant would pay $3,750. The county would be responsible for $1,250. These funds would come out of seized funds. The motion carried unanimously. Noted, the governor has declared Monday, January 20th, the holiday in observance of Robert E. Lee and Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Noted, Mitchell Thomas resigned his position as one of the public defenders for circuit court. Judge Duncan has appointed Wade White to fill that position at a monthly salary of $4,028.27 and a monthly expense allowance of $625. Newton County's monthly share will be 20% of the total, with Lee, Michelle, and Scott counties paying the remainder. A copy of the judge's orders is included in the minutes. Two MAS scholarships in the amount of $500 each may be applied for by relatives of current and retired county employees who are high school seniors or current college students. Deadline applies February 1, 2020. Employee changes. Chris Hollingsworth, Sheriff's Office, guaranteed salary $50,000. Matt, Atkin Matt Atkinson, Sheriff's Office guaranteed salary of $43,000. Ben Kelly, Sheriff's Office guaranteed salary of $45,000. Freddie Gentry, guaranteed salary of $45,000. Max Bounds, uh, full-time deputy, $35,000 per year. 
Pete Pierman, Sheriff's Office, resigned 1223, Malcolm Chambers, 911, resigned 1219 to return to school. His last day of work will be December 31st. Jody Pennington discussed operation of the Newton County Sheriff's Office. The Sheriff also discussed the DEQ grant for solid waste officer to be over inmate garbage pickup. Noted Dwayne Stanford, County Engineer, brought a new contract for bridge inspection for the board to review. The board agreed to leave Dwayne as inspector. Noted David Marshall, Mayor of the Town of Decatur, met with the board concerning the dispatching fees for the, for the town. The town has not paid claims since the county started sending bills in August 2019. The board advised the mayor that the dispatching fee would remain as proposed, and the mayor said he would present that fact to the board of aldermen of Decatur. The amount is $1,403 per month, or $16,838 per year. Joe Alexander made motion. Kenneth Harris voiced the second to the motion to increase the rental fees from $50 to $100 for voting precincts where rental fees are charged. The motion carried unanimously. Page 3. Joe Alexander made a motion. Charles Moulds voiced the second to the motion to approve travel for Brian Taylor and Caleb Rice on January 28th for a pipeline safety training to show the county. Brian to Lima meeting in Pearl on January 24th and Brian to radiological training in Meridian on January 27th. The motion carried unanimously. The board discussed with the Newton County Fire Coordinator Brian Taylor and the board attorney Jason Mangle the possibility of the county turning title to fire trucks located in fire districts over to the fire departments within these districts after trucks have been paid for. Noted the county administrator will check to see what's happened to the garbage body that was supposed to have been sold to Tracks Plus. Kenneth Harris made a motion. Jackie Johnson voiced second to the motion to advertise for surplus timber at the Newton County Landfill. Advertisement to be run in the Newton County Appeal on the 15th and 22nd of January and open on February the 3rd. The motion carried unanimously. Jackie Johnson made a motion. Charles Goblin voiced second to the motion to appoint Billy Joe Everett as receiving clerk and J.R. Addy as requisition clerk for B5. The motion carried unanimously. Kenneth Harris made a motion to close the board meeting to see if an executive session on personnel was necessary. The room was cleared itself for the board attorney, the board, county administrator, and chancellor clerk. Joe Alexander made a motion to enter into executive session on personnel. The same group as above were present. The motion carried unanimously. Joe Alexander made a motion. Charles Moulds voiced a second to the motion to come out of executive session with no action taken. The motion carried unanimously. Noted May Bender, Newton County Tax Assessor and Collector to be on the January 16, 2020 board agenda. Joe Alexander made a motion. Charles Moulds voiced a second to the motion to have all department heads to total all columns on timesheets which are turned into the payroll office. This must be completed before payroll checks can be completed. The motion carried unanimously. Page 4. Joe Alexander made a motion. Charles Moulds voiced a second to the motion to rehire all county and lead employees that were employed as of December 31st. The motion carried unanimously. Noted B5 has hired Kenny Addy and J.R. Addy as full-time employees. Charles Moulds made a motion. Joe Alexander voiced a second for the motion to rehire Jason Mangum as board attorney, Steve Sale as county administrator, Dwayne Stanford as county engineer, George Hayes and Steve Sale as inventory clerks, with Hayes being the certified <coughs> clerk. The motion carried unanimously. Charles Moulds made a motion. Ken Harris voiced a second for the motion to give Alfonso Morgan a dollar per hour raise. Charles Godwin resigned as board president. Lynn Hollingsworth was vice president and did not seek re-election. Joe Alexander made a motion. Charles Moulds was the second promotion to elect Kenneth Harris president of the board and Jackie Johnson vice president of the Newton County Board of Supervisors for the 2020 year. The motion carried unanimously. Noted B5 Supervisor Jackie Johnson advised the board that he would be on Blue Cleveland's property on the corner of Hearst and Strebeck Road checking soil for possible dirt pit. Kenneth Harris made a motion. Charles Moulds voiced a second for the motion to recess until January 16, 2020 at 9 a.m. The motion carried unanimously. Thank you, Steve. You've heard the reading of the minutes. Are there any corrections on page one?
phase two. Phase three. <coughs> phase four. We'll get a most text in seven minutes. So we're so all in favor sign. I mean, raise your hand. Joe, come on up. Tiger Commissary has had some discrepancies in it. That's the company we use for the jail, for the canteen, and for the uh, get supplies to the jail. Uh, we have. $2,069.77 to Tiger Commissary from the Sheriff's Canteen, fund number 113. Uh, Charles Moulds wants to purchase a truck, and he's paying $19,750 out of his B3 road fund, uh, fund number 133 <coughs> to Southern Trucks and Equipment, and $19,750 from his B3 bridge fund, fund number 163. We'll get a motion to that effect. We run this special now. I'll make a motion then to uh, approve the special document for these items. Second. So, all in favor? Last, I have what was brought the last time with the DEQ man for paying salary. We have a pay salary for uh, deputy. Uh, what we're going to do is that on the DOT agreement 
that we have, they pay $10 an hour uh, for the guys out there with, with the MFA contract. And what we do, I don't know how much money I have to put it to it, but whatever money we would take that we got from DOT, we would put back into the fund to help, so I guess, supplement the salary from the DEQ. So it wouldn't be fully 100% funded by. We I mean, just something to help back out. Because it's helping us, helping all to pick up trash on the state and county roads also. Gary, is that $10 going to be for a 40 hour week for 52 weeks? How's that work? They say, <coughs> excuse me, they say on the DOT agreement we've got to pick up trash on state highways at least seven hours a day for three days a week. So that's what that money would be. So would they only pay for three days a week then? Yes, that's correct. They're going to pay for 21 hours. Yes, that's correct. $210 a week. Yeah. How much is that DD Cooper Act, Steve? 19,000. So that's uh, roughly 11,000 from the 10 dot rent. You look at 29,000, so you're going to be short. Six or 7,000. That's what you and I talked yeah. about. Uh, that, what are we looking at? Cyber wise. To be honest with you, I'm going to hire Scott Smith. No, yeah. he's already DEQ, has hey. any DEQ certifications. I don't think okay. he's a vote. Right. I'm a trustee. <laughs> <laughs> and, and with the DEQ grant, you have to have, okay. uh, for someone to be to be the inspector or investigator for illegal dump sites, so you've got to be DEQ qualified or certified. And so he does that all the He's already got the qualification certification. Okay. Yeah. You guys can I'm sorry. The salary, uh, Steve and I talked about it would be his same salary that he's making now. Okay, so we're... I don't know exactly what it is, it's 30. This is only me. Okay, it's 30 something. I can't remember exactly what it is. Okay. And he would be responsible for taking the inmates out for the state, for the state and the county records and for doing this. So, so we must use all of them. Didn't Steve say we had the last meeting had one DEQ grant a whole lot right here? Or did he say we had two more? I don't know about one or something. Oh, yeah. Uh, this one here? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think I'm going to ask some questions, Steve. We got you. We got you. <coughs> you and I talked a little bit last night. You yeah. talked told me about the potential here. Right. And I don't know if I had any time to think about it more about it, but I'm, as I, I'm speaking now, Again, we're talking about being able to pick up on state highways in, in okay. Newton County. Wouldn't be on the interstate. No, no. We're going to verify whether or not this includes state aid roads, Correct. which would be wonderful if it does. Correct. My question is, with the weather like we've had the last three weeks, what are we going to do? Are these inmates going to put on rain slippers and get out of the Depending on if it's 20 degrees, probably not. Yeah. Uh, if something like this, probably so. 60 degrees and just drizzling rain and getting together. Yes. Bye. Availability, I think I asked you a question the last time as far as inmates, and I know you said something about a judge. Yeah, we're getting that worked out for the next term of court to ensure that we have inmates at the jail to actually do this. We've got inmates down there now, we've got three that I can put on there right now. Uh, but I want more than three to do it. So I, I don't think having inmates to do the work is going to be a problem. Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But I, those, those inmates, they, don't they have to sign a release form to work? Don't they, I mean, they do, and also do their, in their plea agreement also. Okay. What do they get for working like that? What will they get as far as the time off? Good no. yeah. <coughs> what the what Rankin County does is they it's someone that's fixed to plea to a non-violent crime, which is a felony, but, but it's non-violent. What Rankin County does, they go up to their circuit judges and their DA office, and they will offer the person that's fixed to plea uh, with the plea 
plea deal. Look, you can stay here. You can say, let's say you're going to get four years. Well, they're going to give them the options to stay in the county jail for four years instead of going to DOC. And I, if it were me, I would much rather want to stay in the county jail than go to DOC. Uh, it keeps them pretty much in their own county. They can see their family every weekend there in 15 hours. Uh, the, what's been going on with DOC right now, I'd say the atmosphere of the county jail is a whole lot better than the state, than the state facility. Uh, there are a lot of pluses for them to stay in the county jails. They're going to DOC. At the same time, uh, you don't have DOC telling you how to run your jail and what to spend money on and stuff like that. But these also are not state inmates. But once the four years are served, they'll go back before the judge and judge your time served. Okay, so there they will not be state inmates. Correct. Okay. Correct. We have a lot of illegal dump sites. How are we going to handle that with the county supplies, the equipment to clean up those illegal dump sites? If they're too big for the inmates to, to pick up, we'd have to look at that heavy load. There's no doubt. Uh, if it's something that the inmates can handle, we can put in place and no get problem. Well. I mean, they got, they got, they got quite a few of them. Yeah. But I would like to know their response from um, they're going to be able to pick up on our county state aid road other than the 15 and 503 and 504. That, yeah. That's something I would like to know. Yeah, me and you both, I don't have an answer to that for you, but I'll get you one. Yeah, like you and I talked about. Uh, you know, as good as it is, as good as it sounds, mm -hmm. two days every five weeks in a beat. If, if you're not going to be able to pick up on state aid roads over those Correct. three days, Correct. that's not a lot of time. And on our county roads, I think we have more problems with the trash than we do the state. The state well, roads is everywhere. You're it's everywhere, everywhere, but I think our county roads are worse than the state roads. And that may be. But, the, the way I'm looking at it, two days are better than nothing. That's the way I'm looking at it. And if we've got the, the manpower to get it picked up, that's why I want to do it. So. What cost? Oh, yes, well, the cost of meats would be about six hundred dollars a month. So I guess y'all split it like you do everything else. So ten percent and pay six dollars a month. So this is not coming out of general fund. Not if it's on the road. So so we're talking about the matching part to the grant. Is that what we're talking about? No, this would make up the rest of the salary. Because well, that's my point. We're, yeah. we're starting with the grant. Starting with the grant. Let's say we use 16 of that 19, then the beach will have to match 16. If that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. So that's not coming out of the gym. Where is this $10 going then that comes from him by? $10 an hour. Where's that money going? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if you can match one rent with another rent. That's why I said you need to talk to them now. Well, they're going to pay us ten dollars per dollar an hour, or whatever account we decide. That's what I'm. That's what I'm asking. Can that not? If, can sure. that not go toward offsetting each sure. of the beach expense? Yeah, but still, you're still. We're going to be out some. I recognize yeah. that. Yeah. That's that's what I'm trying to tell you. Still going to be out some. We're going to be out the six hundred dollars a month for the board. Out. And that's the way we figure it. So y'all the the DEQ grant matches fifty percent of the salary. Correct, that's matching rent, correct. And uh, and so if the MDOT pays eleven thousand dollars, then you it's closer to eight thousand that you're gonna have to match. That's, that's around $650 a month that would come out of the needs. Yeah. Yeah. Did we ever determine the salary? I think Steve was on the phone. I did not. What, what is the salary? The man you're trying to steal could probably take it. He said right there. Oh, wait, well, you certainly do it. You're sitting right there. 30, 30, 30, 6, 857. <laughs> Do you have that contract? Uh, did you have to do a contract with uh, Yeah, we feel we signed the contract in December. And we're still waiting for them to get their response.
talked about in the study until I guess it's okay. Through the year, through the year. About 18.4 from the ground, 18.4 from us. Which were about 11, then did I say 11 would come from MDOT? Yes, dear one. So, right at 7,000. Six hundred a month that would come out of these. Split a over ten thousand. So, yeah, split. Two and two. Okay. I got ten thousand four hundred. Two over one. And there will be. So six hundred people said a month. Two days. Right? It would be six hundred total. About six hundred, six hundred and fifty total. For all five beats. Scott be moving over then. And we talking like tomorrow or we're gonna need to talk about the landfill manager replacement too, so that does come into play. Well right? seeing we haven't got the paperwork for the okay from the state yet from MDOT. So 
once we get that, and I don't know, it may be this week, maybe another month, I'm not sure, so it's not, I don't think immediately needed in the It's not going to happen in the next 10 days. I would not think so. Okay. 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 Pop in formally, introduce myself before the morning. Um, I'm not going to take up much of your time. I know y'all got important matters to do, but I just wanted to let the board know that I am in the courthouse. Obviously, my office is on the other end. It's open. My office is, office door remains open. So if anybody individually needs to come and see, ask for some help or assistance in the matter, I'm certainly more than willing to do that. And as a board, I'm more than willing to help in any way that I possibly can and able to. Um, I appreciate what y'all do. I appreciate how difficult some of the decisions come across. And I thank you all for, for asking the voters to let you make that decision. Um, the fire hydrant is currently really heavy on me right now, but I appreciate being back in Newton County. I'm very happy to be back in Newton County. So I think that um, in past, especially most recently everything was centric towards the show county but the eight circuits four counties and i think all four counties need to be involved in some way so um, with that if anybody has any questions for me right now i'll be more than happy to answer anything but i, I, I may be out of line here but i would like to ask the judge if he heard what the sheriff was saying about I, the I inmates caught, i caught the tail end of it i think he may have already spoken with you about we have, we have, we, 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 inmates, do you see that as a real? I don't know enough information to give a qualified opinion on it. Okay. I'm just Fair being enough. truthful about that. That may have sounded like a lawyer answer, but that's just a man. Thank you, Judge. Good to see you. Thank y'all. Thank you, Judge. No, sir. I'm just, just here. He doesn't no, sir. I'm just here to listen. Scott, you want to see? He's in the short room. Yeah, come join him. No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I want to finish well. That's it. That's it. But, I didn't say you wouldn't finish well. <laughs> We're gonna miss you, sir. Well, well, thank you. Got a couple of quick things. Bam, this morning. Um, so you were trying to jump to your part. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can we ahead. talk on that for just go a moment? Ahead. Go ahead. There's a whole lot more depth this thing than we really realize. And I've been trying to study this just in my spare rainy day time. Some of what we're doing right now with this illegal dump site cleanup, you know, we've been trying to do that out there. And it's just hard for me as one to go and do it. We call on your guys a lot. We do some of these things already. And this Kenny O.J. me and him talk about the same one all the time. Um, if something needs to be done, it can be done. Um, you know, both with using inmate help and I just did one time to care for two weeks ago, about 1,200 pounds. I mean, it's, I got a call on it, took a look at it, uh, called the DPW guys to get me the clam truck out here, let's pick this stuff up. Well, they're afraid of the cost. On these illegal dump site uh, cleanups, we, we weigh the cost on that to get the stuff up. It's plastics and trash bags, things of that nature. This happened to be a swimming pool and some wicker furniture that was just thrown on Robert's Road, which is inside the city limits over here. And I just, I just had a little time, we, we picked it up, we got it up. Ross, they do, or they did, and we got it out there and got it exposed to it. We've been trying to do some of these things already, but it's just hard not, you know, everyday focusing on that uh, to do it. But as you mentioned, using some county equipment, dump trucks, some of that stuff's going to be too heavy for these inmates to pick up. Now, this is dump site cleanup, not just road. I'm saying this thing's a whole lot more in depth. And there was some additional money in there. That's what I just brought the barrel on that. I didn't want to interrupt any of it, but there's a little bit more money available in there. Again, I have read that thing 100% to fully absorb everything out of it, but y'all got it before you. 
Yeah, some of those cracks in that paper power is already, you know, about Yeah, the $10 yes. mile that he's talking about on the uh, M-Dot, I'm unclear on that because you know I when we come from M-Dot down there. I know the uh, trash lady, litter crew, she called us, Miss Connie McMullen down there, and she's going to be the go-to person uh, to get you kicked off started in that, find out what's available, and to make that determination between State Highway and uh, State Aid Road. I, I'm uncertain on that. I can't answer yes or no on that. But we've also got uh, at point of contact in Pearl for solid waste enforcement. Again, I may have opened up the can on this when I started talking with him way back and just said, hey, here's who you need to go to, points of contact, and then kind of roll from there. But it's a lot too. Um, that, that, uh, that solid waste grant. No, $19,000, $19,101, something like that. Yeah. Uh, Okay, we have the waste tire grant. That's where we're, we're getting at, yes. That won't interfere with that any. Okay. We've got an amnesty day grant that we applied for last year. We've still not used, so we got that one. And then we've got the 19,000 sitting here that we've not applied for yet. It's 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 not. April, end of April on that yeah. for the all. Um, yeah, we got to April to decide what to do with it. It's a non competitive, so it's basically a budget appropriation. Okay, so some of those grants in that paper that you have, a lot of those are competitive grants, though, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, competitive and, and, and or non competitive. That's correct. Um, so let me clarify, too. Using this money, would that take away our amnesty debt? Unless we fund it ourselves. Well, you can apply, you can either apply competitively or competitively for it, or you can use the non competitive grant for it. We, we get an appropriation each year, and it's usually 16 to 19. And this is the 19 we're talking about. Yeah, that's non competitive. So again, if, if this is used for salary, we would not have a hamster today, would it? You will have one this year, but next year you'll have to decide whether you want to apply. That's what you're saying. We've got the 19,000 in the bank, so to speak. Yeah. For the amnesty today. We got from last year. We applied for a grant last year. We're, we've got a, another year to spend it. So we've got an amnesty day that we can use this year, plus this grant. Not. Roll around the next year. Yeah. What does that do to us? You'll have a grant that comes in, and you can either use it for solid waste officer or amnesty date. And then you have to turn around and apply for a competitive grant for amnesty day or solid waste officer. Okay. Or you can split what you get. And usually it costs about ten to twelve thousand to get one of these. I'm thinking last year we spent more, around fourteen thousand. So just for the hazardous clean up, the guys come out of Georgia. And I'm getting, I'm asking too many questions, I guess, but if we didn't have the one day amnesty day like we had, and people brought that same material to the landfill, can we hold that at some point and let those hazardous waste people come pick that up? And if so, what kind of cost would that be? I guess it would fall under the same uh, standard, standard operating procedure right now is if someone shows up someone or something that they think may be hazardous, I have to make a call on it to DEQ. Normally it's out of date chemicals, things of that nature. You and I have talked about yeah, some of that yeah. stuff. Uh, normally they have me read what I can off the label and say, oh, that, that's going to be okay, you can dispose of that. There. And you see where I'm going with my question. I'm just wondering if we can not have the yeah, that, I mean, yeah, as far well, as the biggest thing we catch on our MC day is tires. And we're getting tired, and I mean, I get a hundred of those every two weeks. Of course, some of that, I'm looking into that right now. Some of that's, and y'all know what, what I'm, I'm really asking that. is the amnesty day really getting us that much mileage? Well, so how many tons do you buy? I'd have to go back to what the paperwork on that. Do you think it's a lot or a little or what you get? Pretty expensive for what we do. Yes. That's kind of what, that's, I was, that's what I've been to. I, didn't I mean, you know, and, and the stuff you're getting, you're, 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 
elderly people are going to bring you your paints, your chemicals, that, and it's just shed stuff that, that accumulates over time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's the type of stuff that can be disposed of already. That's correct. You know, yeah. if, we, if we can identify. And there would be no reason we couldn't basically do an amnesty day and say, hey, you bring this at no cost to you. That's correct. And then if we identify something that we think may be, put it over cannot here. be buried in that landfill and or transported to the Kemper County, then that's where I got to make a call on that. And I'd say, I'd say 100% of the time thus far, they've said, no, you're good on that. You can, you can dispose of it. We might even have three amnesty days a year where people can come on Saturday morning and bring those materials. I mean, you do get some clean up stuff. Uh, you know, okay. okay. All right. I said, on, that, on that same note, uh, I think we need to know if DEQ will allow that on this grant. I mean, if you call in an Amos today grant, but you're not having an Amos today, obviously, it will be an Amos still on. That's the other thing when I'm checking between these two here, there's a lot more boxes that's got to be checked to qualify than just inmates picking up garbage. It's, it's pretty in depth. I mean, it's a grant. We've got sitting there, can be used for amnesty day, can be used for site cleanup, can be used for solid waste options. We have to identify what we want to apply for. That pretty much clear up my question. I guess, again, what I was trying to say was we could have amnesty day at the landfill, yeah. not have to have it at the show mall. And that's something that I kind of want to do. I just fell in on the way it was. I mean, we're having to double handle stuff, basically, right. where if it's coming in there, a lot of it can be disposed of on site so without us truck. wouldn't have a problem doing it that way. Yeah. And I do have the room there that we're already on. on because, I mean, I save a lot of money. Because you don't have to beat it out. But again, if there's any more questions, anybody wants to get offline, I don't care. Or we can get in depth with that. Oh. Uh, as far as landfill matters, the uh, timber cut, I don't think, was it supposed to hit today's paper? Mm -hmm. right. uh, I, yesterday. Yeah, or yesterday. You know, I'm glad you know, they came out. I don't think I, I don't. I'm not seeing the paper. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. See. And I went through it real quick. But I received one call from one cutter, or caller, logger guy. And I'm going to reach out personally to some others. Hey, are y'all aware of this? But there's, uh, they're unclear on, is it the 22 acres? That's where I got the, the next sale, future sale is going to have to go in. But they're asking about the property across the road. Is that to be cut too? And I tell you the truth, I don't know what we discussed on that when all this first come up. The main thing I'm primarily concerned with is where the future sale has got to be. That across the road is not going to be considered in this future sale. But it's, if they're cutting this, you can how we wrote it up. I, mean, I just, again, I don't remember. I think it was 20 something acres is what I was. That's how I identified it because Wayne on the survey, that's roughly what it come out to, uh, give or take a few. But we're dealing with that wetland down there. They've got to stand off the in order to get interest in small tracks. But just a, a, a bullet to throw out on there, when <coughs> the timber does get cut, and we do get over there and start doing some rubbing and clearing. You know, there's another site for county. To, all the dirt we excavate, I'll be pulling some naturally, but it's available. The more we pull out there, the less will have to be cut out for black rip. So it's a alternate site to be used for that. I mean, we've got our dirt left in this last haul we had. We've still got a good bit of that, and it's going to carry over, but we're always going to need dirt there. You know, just, it's part of the rule that you have to do to stay in business uh, for the cover. But there again, just want everybody to know that there's like, some availability of dirt right there for all the beans. Um, no one on the ESCO slag, if anybody's following any of that, I'm in de desperate need of some of that. Uh, Alvin was really good to help me out uh, last year, but this sawdust hole we're going through right now, that stuff doesn't set up, it, hold, it holds more moisture than what this ESCO dirt's holding, and these big trucks I got coming in and out, where I'm over there just about every Saturday pulling them out. I mean, you know, just, they're, they're getting stuck, they can't help it, and the rain we've had, it's uh, nature of the beast. So if anybody gets in the hauling business and I can get some, I'm ready for that. Do have a new driver slated to start, possibly end of next week, and if I do, I'm going to try to keep Bill around, this part-timer, to possibly, if I can borrow a dump truck, I can haul some myself. Be 
uh, granny thing or somebody's truck. Uh, and then again, just throwing that one out there. Uh, how many loads you talking about? Oh, Lord. Uh, I kind of told out when he said, how many? I said, as long as the gate's open, you can get in here. I'll sell you 7 o'clock at night. That's what, yeah, I mean, again, we don't need it as critical as dirt, but right now, I had, we had pretty much un undercut that road uh, a little bit last week and go down there and bed some. Because these, saw those trucks coming in at 22 tons roughly, and imagine how wet and that weight and him having to make that turn, it's just turned it up. We, we undercut, put a little in there, and I'm already getting into kind of a bare bank of what I'm robbing from, so I'm almost out. I mean, one load would be good, ten loads would be great. It's not a one thing you'll have to do. Right. Jasper County, on that Esco slag, yes. Jasper County went through the EQ. Mm -hmm. They've been hauling and hauling and hauling it. So if you uh, need to get it, you need to get it across there. Right. There. Well, DEQ, they're about, again, y'all know this from y'all's previous years here, it's, they're always back and forth. It has to be considered used, as far as I, I hear, high traffic areas. You know, that's my road to get in and out. And they say that's not a high use road. Yes, it is. I mean, it's daily traffic six days a week to get to the backside of the landfill. So we kind of combat that with that. Um, Last board meeting, we said we push this one back. Uh, we're fixing that. We're considering buying another garbage truck. Might like board consider us taking bids uh, or opening back up for it. The previous one I got started to really show its age. That'd be the 2015 Freightliner that I've got. Western Star trucks have been running, have been pretty good trucks. Again, not trying to just say that's what we want, and we got to go by the bids, but uh, the um, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm trying to talk there just a second. Uh, the 2015, I understand we normally do a three year run out on the trucks, great if I'm wrong on that, Steve. And, and my oldest truck that I've got, and that's This is just what we got on lease purchase. Oh, well, okay. Because I mean, I've got two trucks that are not on. Yeah. I've got this, that this number. Is all, this is just right. what we have on lease. I've got actually on hand a 2012 and a 2013 that I'm going to rob a compactor from. And again, they're going to call them if I've got a truck. I will have one once we remove the compactor. Compactor will have to go to Paul Mack and be refitted. That's We found that to be the cheapest way. It's a $15,000, $20,000, depending on what all wrong with it, to refit. New hoses, new pump, paint job. Puts me out of commission for about two or three weeks with that backup truck. But once it gets back, it is a good looking bed. And it, I haven't had any problems with the last two that they've refitted. And, uh, but again, something more than you might have considered that we're, they get beat up pretty bad. Um, and we talked about the six pond last time. So we got, got a lot of me. We have six trucks with compactors on No, sir, we have five. We have three mains and two reserve trucks. We got a 2018 Western Star, a 2019 Western Star. And you know, the last truck I bought was a full walk for was all <coughs> car, but that's the walk for trailer. We, do we have the 2008 no. Western Star? No. That's oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Uh, yeah, the 2008, that's the one I just picked. I'm sorry. That's the one we bought for the walk for trailer. That's why we held off of buying a truck uh, last year because we got in that bind with our haul. That 2008 is, is the tractor. It does That's correct. Okay. That's correct. So we got 18, a 19, a 12, and a 13, and a 15. Right. I've actually got two older trucks than that 2015 Freightliner. And those are one, the, the truck zero truck, two, I'm getting ready to rob the bed from. The 12 and the 13 both have garbage. That's correct. That's See, we refit. You'll get, you'll wear out two trucks from one compact. We've got five. Five trucks. Yes. And you want to replace the 12 or the 13? Yes, sir. Because the 2015 that I'm running right now as a main, it's the one that's really starting. I'm having to pull it off the road once a month. It's light. It's a lot of electronic stuff. 
and it's the one that I want to pull out and make the main backup truck. It's still a good truck, it's just we're having to work on it off and on now. Uh, a lot of electrical issues with it, and it's just the checking it goes through. I mean, you understand these trucks are running four days a week, roughly 140, 50 miles a route. That's four days a week. Uh, it's just starting to show its age. Uh, and when I have to back it up with that 2012 or the old 13, after two or three days of them running, one of them's going to cough up a problem. And that's all I have to tell you. So, to your question. Oh, um, Alan. Current landfill on trade. I forgot to bring this one up. I had covered up. Uh, our class one permit expires July, 31 July of 2025. That's what the life expectancy of that current sale I'm on right now. I don't think we're going to make 2025 with that sale, and this is sawdust. Now, it's a trade off there. Sawdust is money, but sawdust is also shortening the life of that sale. Has DQ said anything about your elevations? Now, we can build up if that's where you're going with this, and uh, we've already looked at that. If we do have to build up once I reach uh, completion of the westward boundary, once we re reach our current elevation, we will build up. And I'm going to start on that far west end because in the future with the new site going on and the new ground we're talking about cutting the timber, if you build up there, you're going to lose visibility of it. And with equipment operating down there during the day, I like people to be able to at least see what's going on if there's an accident. It's just a safety precaution. And not to mention the public coming in and out. Sometimes they get stuck, they go the wrong direction. Uh, yeah. I don't know if this changed or not, but I know when I was certified for that, mm -hmm. the slope, it was always said that the maintaining of this slope, as long as you could maintain it, you could climb with it. Mm -hmm. Just like the other landfill. That's correct. The one that's immediately westward of the. Uh, well, we messed up on that one. We didn't keep the but, ground level. But the height of yeah. is what I'm getting at. I think you know we can we could build up on that other one, and we're going to have to if, if we don't have this other one. You know, after timber's cut, you're talking grubbing operations got to go on. Then some dirt excavated out, both for y'all's use, our use, the bowling, you know, that's a big process. And then that thing's got to be cut down. Your buffer tested, uh, and it's. A lot to look at on that. But again, I just I would not want to build that one up there on that end so high where you lost visibility of your working operation and just the general public down there because they get down there and scrounge and go through things. And if you lose sight of it, they build up, you're going to lose sight of that. And our class two permit, we never did hear back from them on that. So we're just hoping to continue because that thing's past lunch and been in the county here for since October, hmm. and I mean, they're, I'm probably 10 loads a week and then we got Class two and the, the water permit and the transportation, the transport permit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They had three that they never replied to. Right, and that's, you've got engineers that have changed hands over there, and I didn't hear anything different at the last conference on that. So you said your contract for class one rubber site is running out. What do, what's the process of? Well, yeah, we'll reapply yeah. if we're still on that. But with the current intake of this sawdust we're getting, I don't think we're going to reach the, the life expectancy. Yeah. It's going to sooner than later. It's not going to make the time. Okay, what is your question? That's, that's it, Jim. Okay, thank you. And we're going to And then I'll submit the No, I think I've got one to I talked to DOT and it does include state aid records. Okay.
contract with DOT to provide the van and the trailer and whatever else they provide, so we would have an officer that would be able to take deputies out on the county roads, state roads, state roads, pick up the truck. Seven days a week, 12 hours a day. And also, <laughs> and also investigate the other side. I'll second. All in favor? Thank you, Governor. We appreciate it. One more question on that. Okay, now, I pick up a lot of garbage in my community, and I find names a lot of times. And I pass, I turn them in, but they never went into work. It's going to work. Charlie had a college yesterday. I think there were like 40 bags of garbage down there. I didn't want to make contact with the head until dark, they get all picked up. I'll let y'all know tomorrow how to work out, but I bet it's going to work out. If it doesn't, they will be in jail. I'm telling you that. If we'll do things like that, we'll see it there. There'll be less trash for the inmates to pick up. Absolutely. And Absolutely. we have There's no that. consequences at that point. Yeah. Thank you, all right. Thank, Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Ms. Cookson. Those applications are due May 22nd. They're due May 22nd. Uh, as a county, you can apply for up to $600,000, um, but is a you are required to put in match, and the more the more match you put in, the more points you get. Uh, like I said, it has to benefit low and moderate income persons. Some of the different things we've done with other counties. Uh, fire. You can do fire stations, you can't do fire vehicles. I know you need some trucks, but they don't, they don't allow trucks under that program anymore. You can do uh, community services that benefit low-income people, like we did the Senior Citizen Center, Department of Health, DHS, something like that. Um, you can do uh, handicap accessibility of county-owned buildings, um, and you can do roads, if it's a road with a Minimum of 51% low and moderate income, you can do a road. Uh, part of your match can be in kind. Uh, so uh, a lot of times if they do, do do roads or anything like that, there's there's some work you can do. You can count your um, employees and your equipment time. Obviously, we're just getting started on those. But they're due in May. We have our application workshop next week. We don't anticipate any changes. Can I ask a question? Sure. Back on the road. Yes, sir. Uh, needs to be 51 percent. A minimum of 51 percent low income. Minimum of 51 percent. Mm -hmm. Now that road would have to be brought up to state aid specifications. That's what they say. That's what they say. Would that would us bringing that road up to state aid specifications be a part of our match, or is that outside our match? No, I mean you if you would if I could, say you did all the prep work and right. contracted the paving or whatever. Yeah, that's fine. That would be your match. We did, um, I just closed out a road in Lee County last year. Do you know, know, know where Lowhead Dam Road is? Yes. To Lowhead Dam Road, to Lowhead Dam. Um, they did all the prep work, and that's how they did their match, and then they contracted for um, Paving. I'm trying to think who did it, but yeah, for Paving. They contracted that for Paving. Okay. Uh, to determine your low mod, because you don't meet any uh, low mod by sets, so she would have to do a door to door survey. So, we can provide a survey form that's based on income. That would be up to us to do? Yes, sir. You would have to do the survey. So if you had, you have to do 80%, 85%. So if you had 100 houses, you'd have to do 85. But is, there, is there a minimum number of houses? Yes, sir. Yes. So if you, if you What's that on? Um, income figure? Let me see if I have the current one with me. Uh, uh, like I said, we don't. I brought you some surveys, but we don't know if they're going to change any of that next week when we go, if it's been updated for the new year. Yeah, this is, I think this is current. For an EDK 
County, um, their income has to be below twenty-six three fifty for one person, thirty one hundred thirty thousand one hundred for two, thirty-three eight fifty for three, and then it goes up based on the number of people in the household. facilities that can be for exercise, multi-use, nature, anything like that. And you that's an 80-20 grant. Maximum grant's 120, which you have to put in 30, and you can do in kind. It is a reimbursement for it. You have to put it in kind. $120,000 $120, grant and you have to put in 30 if you got 120. You can do in kind on that as well with the employees and equipment. And it's a reimbursement you have to do our project needs to reimburse the end. Uh, Hello. We are looking, you is going to be applying for one. Uh, for a while longer. They're going to be applying for a trail at, at ESCO. But to put, to try to put a trail at ESCO. At ESCO. ESCO Park. Round. Oh, 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 sorry, at ESCO Park. Okay. Sorry, yeah, Newton's going to be applying for one for ESCO Park. Just going to go with them. But that, like I said, you can do it doesn't have to be 120, that's just your maximum. Uh, so we've got a lot of different. And put a trail across the room. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, oh, huh? Think about that. Think about that. Uh, the second recreational program is the Land Water Conservation Fund. Um, that's a 50 50 program, up to 500,000. Um, only part of your in kind, only part of your match, your 50% can be in kind. Um, that's for any recreation. So, ball fields, playgrounds, splash pads, anything like that. Those applications are due May the 21st. No splash pads today. Yeah, I think you have plenty of splashing today. But all of this profit is not to be county owned. County owned, yes, sir. Um, the, uh, those of you May 21st, uh, but they are for funding for 2021. You will not know until March of 21 if you're going to be funded. Competitive. Yes, they're competitive. Um, and that again is a reimbursable grant. You have to complete it before you can be reimbursed. The low income grant, what was that deadline? Now, the low income for CDBG, that is May 22nd. But we would need to know no later than the 1st of March to get everything done. We'd have to get done. Uh, Do you just. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll. Do the survey. Do you have to do the plot? If you give us a 911 uh, address, we can put it on that. Okay. Just 911. Yeah, we got, I mean, their fiscal address. And then and we, we can we can do some pretty big ones pretty quick if we have to, but we like to not have to be the one I'm thinking is, is, is not very large at all. Okay. Well that road we did in Lake County had ten dollars on it. So, I looked at one you all did in Jasper County quite a few years ago where they took well in my roads back out that way. I looked at it. What the county road? 
been here years ago, though. Yeah, it has been, but I don't remember doing one. I know we did one. What was Buster Ham's district? I know which one it was. Got a stringer. I know we did one out there. Jennifer's had one out there. Did one out there several years ago. Buster Ham. Buster Ham. That's, that's an old hot. That's an old hanging. That's an old long time ago hanging. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is I have the sheriff left. Okay. Uh, I met with the sheriff. And you want to talk in front? No, I just thought he was still here. He might want to pipe in. I met with the sheriff and uh, his, some of his officers uh, before Christmas, about four New Year's, and we talked about grant funding and trying to get some more funding for the sheriff's department. Uh, this is the justice system grant. See, just got it signed. I think you approved. This is going to be for some intoxilizers. Trying to get enough intoxilizers to have one in every car. And we'll get that submitted. I got a question. I don't know what we got to answer. What are those? What's the cost of those individuals? Do you know? Uh, I don't have it's thousands. I think it's three hundred and seventy five. Oh, okay, it's not much. Like so you You get thirteen for five thousand dollars you're applying for thirteen intoxilizers with the full kit that comes with them. And then two extra cases of the mouthpieces. Because you have to have a mouth change mouthpiece out. Um so we we worked on that. Um he asked about the UI. Grants uh, in the past, Newton County had a DUI officer, but several years ago, I think he stopped getting that. Um, so he had asked about applying for a DUI officer. Those those grants are being released February third. I don't know what the date is or when they're going to be due, but he has expressed interest in, in doing that. And uh, for uh, the new with the DUI officer, it pays for their salary and benefits, but they do have to work nights and weekends when we anticipate having the, more DUIs, they, that's when they like longer work, they have to, they have to turn in a lot of paperwork and go to training. They also can possibly do a little overtime, so like when you have the drive over or get pulled over, you arrive a lot of special periods they come you see on the news and everything, so that you have extra overtime for the other officers to assist you. I think that was a heavy paperwork. It, it is a very paper, heavy paperwork. You have so to turn in every ticket and every Time sheet and like a trip to Jackson every night. Um, and he also, we also discussed they're also taking at that time when they take the seat belt, seat belt they're going to occupant protection, which is seat belt and child restraint. They'll take those at the same time. And but what most people use that for, they won't go an officer for that. But they use that to do overtime for a clicketer ticket and those sort of things that, that you normally do to help pay some of your overtime costs. Um, so when I get the dates and when that's due, I'll get back to Sheriff and Steve and, and keep y'all updated on that. That's my boss. Um, he asked about the best. That's that 50-50 grant. Um, those are probably going to be taken in April or May. So we'll, uh, we'll let you know about that. And the final thing is the VOCA grant. I don't know if he's talked to you all about the VOCA grant, Victims of Crime Act that grant. Um, this is a grant to employ a victim services coordinator. Uh, the city of Newton has been has been the only uh, entity that has had this grant in the past. They no longer have it, and I think the sheriff has talked to some people. It, the money comes from the Department of Health, and he has talked to some people, and they are interested in Newton County applying to get the program back, and it pays for the salary of the coordinator for training for the coordinator and your officers on dealing with victims, special victims of uh, child, uh, spousal, or sexual abuse, or crimes. Um, it helps uh, coordinate services that the coordinator would you know, be able to help people that are victims of crime, help get them connected to services they might need or can use and follow up with it. So uh, those are due next month. He is you know, asked me about applying for those. Do you have the paperwork? Do you have the paperwork? I, it's an online. I have, yeah. Okay. So we'll, I mean, just, just want to kind of update you on that. I don't know exactly how much. It's a, that's an 80 20 grant. Um, so I don't know exactly how much he's looking to apply for. Because we haven't gotten into that. But um, he's talked to. <coughs> Newton and kind of has some of the information they used when they did theirs. Steve, are you looking? I think you can find a time to look into that.
Which got closed, Liz? I think that's all of the grants I have today that I know about. Um, is there anything that I need to be looking for uh, that you need some assistance with? Uh, I know you always use money. Hmm. Well, we need some that are not matching. <laughs> that's hard to find. <laughs> Do you want to take that matching? We need yes, not grants. Yeah. I get it. Each of you a copy of the East of the Planning District Board. <coughs> Did you want to make any more changes? If not, I was going to give Lynetta the change we made. I've tried to change some of these because they're not active, but it's an active economy, so I don't need to work with it anymore. I'll need some knowledge. Okay. All right. I'll do that to Ms. Chapman. Thank you. Good to see you. When does the registration open? I don't know. Just go to mspdd.org.com or you should be able to see that. You should be getting that flyer that they send out every year from, from the state organization. And uh, you should go to the movie that you Scott Cutting Times for Scrapple. Y'all both on the front page with the Oh, really? Yes. Boy. And Tyler McCon. Okay. <laughs> Well, that ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Oh, y'all want to be capital, yeah. Open up a pack on what? Go ahead. I can't believe Tyler found a photographer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had to run that down. He was the only one. Thanks, Lynette. Thank you. Good to see you. Miss Bender. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Bender. They filed a red book, just never came back in. And they're wanting to get a refund. I told them, I said, you can't get a refund. I can fix what we're working on, but I can't do nothing about what's already been done.
That means he's power. Their paperwork is getting so hard to read. That adjustment that we had to make on it, we sent the bills out and she called us back, but she had it down where the um, recap goes. You know how you print on the printer? All this stuff up top is supposed to be what we assess, and then down here is your recap on the bottom. Well, this piece was at the bottom, right near the recap, so we didn't we didn't take it in for the very reason that I didn't want to have to take it in and then turn around and take it off, coming back up here. But then I had to push it back in, so I'm still in the same boat. I didn't make anything in there. this cloud house, they sent in a rendition with the um, inventories on it. And that's the little bake shop that was right down the street right here. Sent an inventory, then she amended the inventory that she had. And before we had a chance to talk to her, she was out of the end. So. Tracky Creek Road. No, no, right here. Right, right down the street. Was there not open? Not bake. Bake. Bake, okay. <laughs> bake. <laughs> But you know, I'm hopeful that we might get this paid since she's closed already. Uh, uh, that's the now. Any questions on this? Not quite good. Okay. Take time. Just to show on, on the right page, this is just showing the changes in the uh, value of the mm -hmm. partial. Right. The top half is the homestead corrections where they were over 65 or on social security disability and uh, did not get signed for last year. We have to make the correction. You can only correct what you're working on. You can't go back and give them credit for something that's already been done. The bottom half is the land road trade changes and corrections and then the back page is my personal property. When do I need to come in and do it? And when did, when did you turn 65, sir? Last year. You need to come in Still between now and March 31st. I will be there when I get this meeting. I'll make a motion to accept May's report here. I'll second that. Uh, All in favor. <coughs> the deal with the uh, online land sale. You know, last year I put it off because I was not going to be here to meet with him and they're going to come, but I'm trying to hold them off until the second board meeting in February. If that's going to be okay. Are you saying you really don't want to do it? Or are you saying? I'm letting them come and make a presentation. Right now, my land sale is, is, is okay. I mean, I've I kind of got it. I, I've got it, I think, down to streamline. I mean, I do have some problems. I'm not saying that I don't. But it's a lot better than where we came from. You know, we, we've got the tough skin on and we tell them what we want them to do and we do that. I do get told quite a few times I'm going to be soon for what I'm doing, but it's okay. it's okay. Okay, so that's that was that one. And the last one is this. Oh, oh. Um. Pioneer. We submitted our proof of claim. We were an unsecured creditor uh, and we got 2788. Yeah, very small. Which is kind of. $2788. No. $2788. <laughs> but the good news. The silver lining, if you will, is that we got the hospital back. So we got the building. Right. Mm -hmm. We're going to work, we, work on the rest of it. The city got the building. Let's make that clear. Not the county. Correct. Yeah. My question to you is what do you want to do? Deposit okay. in Gerald County and, and just do it as a miscellaneous to Deborah? Okay. I can do it. 
<laughs> but you know, in the chapter 11, as an unsecured creditor, um, you will get pennies, pennies, pennies on the dollar. Uh, so, I, it, you know, it is what it is. I'm, I'm really, really astonished. Amazing we got anything. Right. Well, I was too when I opened it, so yeah. I was like, okay. okay. I know it's not enough, but it's okay. I'm going to take the read it. And that's all I got for this. Thank you, Mike. I will be down. Yes, you do that. Because I don't want your name to be on your next week. Because you didn't sign. Thank you. Still don't have anything for us? No, sir. I just enjoy watching <laughs> and learning. <laughs> Changes, Seber Williams, B2, full-time 14 an hour. Terry Tim, Sheriff's Office, part-time 11 an hour. Tommy Boyd, B2, $15 an hour. Andrew Roberts, Sheriff's Office, full-time 35,000 a year. James Addy, B5, 
full time seventeen fifty four an hour. Kenny Addy B five full time fifteen dollars an hour. Jeffrey Todd Brown uh, Sheriff's Office part time eleven an hour. Jesse Tatum B three full time thirteen an hour. Danny Boyd Sheriff's Office part time eleven an hour. Brian Summers Sheriff's Office part time eleven an hour. William Evan Kennedy Sheriff's Office full time thirty thousand a year. Those were employee changes. Uh, holiday governor has declared Monday, January 20th, the holiday in observance for the Lee Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Let's see. Oh, uh, Jason has prepared the new ambulance contract. I need a motion to accept the contract and allow Kennedy to sign it. So moved. So, all in favor. Charles Moulds called. He wants to throw minutes that he is closing McDill Road to heavy haulers until June or May if it dries up. Uh, partly because they had a Pat Harrison project on there and culverts have not set up good enough yet. That's one he closes every year. Pretty much. All charges leading the line to close McDill Road to the time period of the indicator. So, all in favor. That's all I got. Okay, thanks, Steve. Got anything, Jason? I have some stuff that, for executive session, economic development. Okay. Uh, there's more of an update than, than anything, but. Okay. Charles, you have something? Jack, you have one thing. Oh, let me check that back in. I would, at least by way of the board minutes, I would like to recognize the fact that we had Judge Lane Bible serve an unexpired son, Judge McDonald, feel that, and I would just really appreciate it. So, if you want to send him a letter, we appreciate it. I think I can get it. I can get it. We'll send a letter signed by all of us. I guess I'll do that a little bit. I'll do what I need to do here or not. See. The railroad signs. The railroad. Have you talked to me about any of that? He really didn't give me much guidelines. Talk, talk to these guys. We got to give you the guys. Talk to them. You need to give me the Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Um, he, uh, I, I did ask him about, because uh, I told him, so I don't know what to do with the railroad uh, signs. He said, well, there's some requirements and I have them, but uh, I haven't gotten them from them yet. Here's my suggestion. We're going to be riding roads in the next probably 30 to 60 days something we do once a year. And at that point in time with that state engineer there, I think we'll Well this is dated back in December. Is it time sensitive? No, I don't think so. And then put a time on it. Okay. Okay. But Bush will Bush will be able to give us specifics on that then. Yeah. And he'll probably point them out if it's not done. He'll say, Well, you haven't got some sign up here, so oh, boy, uh, Right. Well right. we gonna have to actually thank the crossing signs in the road. Our contract. Our contract. Oh, uh, some of these, some of the roads we just want to ride because some of these roads that are uh, these railroad tracks on, they're not in on state aid roads. I got some on dirt roads. I got. I mean, we are the paint to stay there. Well, the water would have taken. Them. <laughs> but you can, I, I guess you could put up a sign. Yeah. I think that's that's about how it's going to be required. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? I'm good. I'm going to have to go on to Brown's farm, Todd Brown, Dad, what is his name? Roger. Roger Brown. We uh, we had some water problems down in the valley. We used, we used to, we would let it just sit there and it would eventually drain down slowly. So Willie talked him into cutting the ditch for it to go, instead of just sitting in the road, go up down to his property. And that was a mistake. 
of the, the water cut the ditch. Now it's catching all of the water. I mean, all of the water's come through in this turf, you know. I mean, it just got a, a trench down the We're going to have to go in there and I'll fix it. That's going to be off uh, B Lime Road. Uh, B Lime Road. When it gets dry enough, of course, we're going to have a crew down over there. That's all I have. Could we get a motion to close the meeting to see if the executive session is necessary? I'm out of motion. 